Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Car Question. Matt with James. And this week we are driving for the first time this brand on the channel for so many years. We have not tested a single Buick. What's happening? <laughs> I don't know, man. I didn't believe it when you told me. I look at the channel, I look at almost every reviews we did, and we did not review any Buick in the past. And this Invista, hmm, it's a great start. There's not a lot of car that we did not did a review back in the days. So I think Audi is another manufacturer, but that's a PR problem. We're gonna address that in the future, but maybe I think I gave up also. But hey, Buick <laughs> finally decided to give us a call. And now here we go, the first gen of the Invista. And wow, it's gonna dictate the future of the design for Buick. And this vehicle is looking good, but hey, spoiler alert, guess what, James? I don't know. It's a rebadged Chevrolet Trax, but with a touch of luxury. We're still staying in the subcompact SUV class, but guess what? That class is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. It's heading toward the segment of compact sport utility vehicle. I think the compact is more for the engine, maybe? <laughs> maybe it is, but let's look at the exterior. Wow, that's what I like when I see a luxury brand vehicle. It's unique. Everybody is turning head to check, hey, What's that? They're asking us questions about the vehicle. You can see a lot of addition with chrome. You've got that famous color, that ocean blue metallic. How about all those LED headlights? In the night, this is one hell of a vehicle which is looking good. And what I like also is that it's different from the tracks. It's not the same model exactly. The design is very different. It's more appealing for the Buick. And there's not a big difference from a price point when you compare the tracks and this one, but there's going to be a lot of points that you might want to consider to go for this one. First of all, look at the logo, look at the rear, look at those curves. It's kind of a fastback design if you want. You've got also some addition of design right there in the headlights. You're going to see them back again on the side of the vehicle. And whatever model you're going to choose, if you're going to go with the base one, if you're going to go with the Avenir, uh, the fully equipped one, yeah, the wheels will change. But guess what? The styling is still awesome. But now we're testing the fully equipped model and you can see those big 19 inches wheel, aluminum, nickel as they call it. It's looking like luxury. Let's get inside though. Well, it's not too bad though. No, it's not at all like a Trax. This one is more luxurious. There's many materials and also the mix of colors. That's really great. You've got the pebble gray interior right here inside and you've got a real functional interior. Real easy also to use the multimedia system, that big screen, it's base. Even that instrument cluster, still base once again. And you've got also a few poverty buttons down there though. There's no buy zone, but you can still really easily master the climate control and everything. A few storage space, but the big thing with that vehicle is that you're comfortable, even if we're tall like us up in front, in the rear, but let's see in the trunk, it's kind of small though. Yes, like you said, it's lot more like a fastback. So the line of the body doesn't impact on the trunk. So you've got Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, wireless. So this is a real functional and technology mix all inside. But there's a few touch of plastic that feel kind of like the 1990s, you know, GMC, Chevrolet, Buick though. But you're going to be fine. And look at those seats also. You've got some fancy stuff on there. But hey, let's talk about the engine because now we're finding some tracks traces under that hood. Yes, like I said, compact 1.2 liter Ecotec turbo, 137 horsepower and 162 pound feet of torque and still no all wheel drive. I think mm. here it's an opportunity missed because when you have luxury, you can add a little something more like the all-wheel drive to make people decide to go to luxury instead of the regular tracks. 8.4 liter per 100 into town, 7.4 on the highway. And for your US friend, you've got the info right down there. But let's get behind the wheel. How does it feel? This is not a performance beast though. It can do all 
very well, but it's not really entertaining to drive, probably because of the size of that engine. You still get an automatic six speed. You can use a manual mode, but doesn't change much and you don't have any drive mode. Okay, let's get into braking. Well, it's kind of sensible, but still reactive. There's not a lot of pedal travel. Direction is kind of okay. It's still fast though. So this thing can be nimble in parking maneuver. The suspension, well, be careful with that because there's kind of different suspension depending on the option or the model that you're going to choose. If you go with the base one, it's still that good old torsion beam. But if you go with the sporty one, the tourism one, you can choose an option which is called the Watts. So the Watts linkage is still not an independent suspension, but it's going to be better. The best package when it comes to the suspension is the Avenir fully equipped and make it to that size of wheel, those kind of tires that we have right now. So it feels really balanced into the comfort area. But don't get me wrong, if you push too far in a corner, you will get some body movement. But how about the noise inside the cabin though? That's really amazing. That's the real difference here. Yes, we have the design. Yes, we have the interior, but the noise inside the cabin is really great. You know, I was kind of worried because it's a tracks in some kind of way. Yeah. And the tracks was a bit noisy. And this one, you don't hear a thing. Even under hard acceleration. One thing though, gotta be careful if you're parking in a hill. Uh, I will recommend that you use your parking brake first before putting it in, in the park position with the transmission. Why? Because you're gonna feel it shaking and that I don't like it. How about that engine shaking? What is that when we film the engine bay? Man, this is awful. I don't know how everything will hold the engine bay because it has a lot of shaking in there. Yeah, I did even put my hand on it. Sometimes when you see it on camera, it doesn't really show, you know, with all that lens, its stability feature, whatever. But when I put my hand right there on the engine, I was shaking all up to my elbow and my face. It's not normal. So seems like it's brand new. This one's got only 5,000 kilometer. Brand new out of the crate, as we can say. So I don't know. Please tell us if your Buick is kind of shaking or your tracks. Let's talk about price, James. Buick shoots itself a bit in the foot on this one because there's also the Encore that is still available and it is pricier than the Invista here. And the Invista is bigger, more comfortable, got a load of technology in that car. So what's happening with the price? I don't know. Let's get real people. If you go check Buick, check this one. It's under 40K, including the taxes and everything for a preferred trim. Fully equipped, it will go up to $45,000. Remember, it's with all the financing option and you've got all the info down there in the screen. Minus point and plus point, James? On the minus points first, the acceleration is pretty average. Still, an opportunity here is missed without any all-wheel drive available. Because of the line of the body, there's a really small window. The trunk is small because of that same line of the body. And there's still two or three things missing from a luxury point. The rear wiper, the dual zone climate control, and the one-touch power windows. You have to hold the button until the window is truly up. Yeah, and on the plus side, well, it's bigger than the Encore GX, and it's more affordable. It's more affordable for luxury, that unique look. And how about the noise level inside? Even if we were using winter tire, it's getting uh, near the summer though, but hey, it's still a low noise inside the cabin. How about comfort up front in the rear? And there's adequate space for all your passenger to go along. In conclusion, well, Buick is hitting the target right there. If they want to attract young buyers, they are playing the right card and the right car is a good price for that vehicle. So what do you think about that? Feel free to comment, thumbs up, subscribe, and we'll see you another time on another video of Car Question.